In our quote form, we ask uh, multiple different questions in order for us to get the specifications for your well so that we can uh, give you a configured system uh, that will work for your, your setup. Um, I'm going to go through each one of the questions and give you some context uh, to make it a little bit easier for you to answer the questions. Uh, so the first question that we ask is, where is the well located? Uh, and that question we're trying to find out, is it inside of a building, uh, which sometimes wells are actually in a pump house or a well house? Uh, is it outside or is it in a pit? Uh, that will dictate potentially which type of drop pipe kits that we actually quote you. Uh, so that's a pretty simple question, right? Where is your well? Is it outdoors? Is it, in a, is it indoors uh, or is it in a pit? Uh, so that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next question we're going to ask is, what is the depth of the well? Uh, there are really three measurements of depth uh, that we're going to ask. The depth of the well is what the well was drilled to. So that's how far did they actually drill the well. So where is the bottom of that well? And that measurement is from ground level. The next measurement that we ask is the static water level. So the static water level is actually where the water sits inside of the well casing in normal conditions. That's going, to be, that's going to be closer to the surface than the bottom of the well. It's going to be closer to the surface than the pump, the submersible pump level. Uh, it's really where the pressure within the water table has pushed that water up. Uh, so that will be a, a higher level. There's a couple of different ways you can measure that. Uh, you can use a bobber uh, with a weight on the end of it to you know, drop a line down until you get to, uh, until it stops, until it goes slack, and then you can pull up and, and, and look at it uh, and, and measure that distance across that, that line that you did. Uh, there are sonic testers out there. Any well professional has the ability to come and measure that as well. Uh, but that is also a measurement from ground level. We ask you if that static water level measurement, if it's either measured or if it's estimated. Uh, estimations typically are going to be guesses. They're going to be based off of your well report, which could be 10, 15, 20 years old. Uh, you know, they, your water level can fluctuate over time. So we definitely suggest uh, that you get an actual measurement uh, and that you don't go based off an estimation. Sometimes that's the only option. Uh, but we do suggest you get it measured because if we don't have the actual static water level and we've seen this many, many times, uh, we configure the system, we give you all the drop pipe we think you need, you install it, and you're still not in the water. Uh, so definitely trying to get a measurement uh, is the best way to go. The next thing we ask is what is the recovery rate of the well? What the recovery rate is is when you pull water out of the well, uh, you're, you're draining water out of that casing and you've got the pressure from the aquifer of the water table putting water back into it. Uh, in some cases, uh, you have a very low yielding well where that water comes in very slowly and you can sometimes pull water out faster than it's coming back in. Uh, so understanding how quickly that is recovering is a valuable thing to know. Typically, you're gonna be well above any kind of uh, recovery rate that, that a hand pump can't handle uh, just because it doesn't move water nearly as fast as a submersible pump. Uh, so it's typically not an issue. You will know if you have a recovery issue because your pump is going to be a special kind of pump. It's going to be set up to shut, up, shut off if it gets to a certain level. And then you'll really understand you know, that whether or not that, that's going to be an issue and you'll have a lower than the five gallon per minute which is in the top side of, of what we ask. Um, We want to know what the frost level is. So in some states, your frost level or the freeze level underground in the wintertime can be as much as eight feet, uh, even more if you go up into Alaska and, and some, somewhere in, you know, up into the Rockies. Uh, and some places, there is no freeze level. But uh, you know, we want to know how far do we put that weep hole, because we want that pump to weep down to that level every time after use so that it doesn't freeze the pipes. Uh, so, you know, figure out what it is in your area. Usually you can get that through Google, uh, but put that in that spot so that we can get the weep hole right. Uh, we do get questions from people saying, well, I don't have, it doesn't freeze where I'm at. Should I not have a weep hole? We always suggest there be a weep hole. You don't want to pull water up, put it in this stainless steel head, getting beat by the sun in the summertime, 
uh, and allow that that water to get warm and then cool and then warm and then cool. It's, it's just not it's not good for the water. It, it, it'll it'll allow bacteria to thrive. Uh, so you want to get that water level down. So we typically a minimum of 48 inches so that it's a down in a cool uh, a cooler place than than being up in the hot sun. We also need to know the diameter of your casing. So understanding what the size of that casing is so that we can quote you the correct well cap is very important. Uh, and there's two configurations really of, of submersible pumps. One is where the pipe comes through the cap. The other is where it actually comes through a pitless adapter underground. The one that comes to, out underground is much easier to check. Usually there's just a cover on top of the well or it's a cap that's very easy to remove. And then you can just take and put a tape measure across and you can see the inside diameter, you can see the outside diameter. That's much more difficult when the entire weight of the submersible is sitting on the cap. And in that case, what we suggest is you take a cloth tape and you put it around the circumference of the casing. Don't put it around the circumference of the existing cap. Make sure it's actually around the casing, the part that goes, looks like it goes down in the ground. That is the casing. Uh, so pull that around the edge and then you can either look at our form to see what that circumference associates with and there's also a bunch of converters online to convert that uh, co circumference uh, into a diameter. We also need to ask you what the si how high the casing sticks up above ground. So that's relevant because with our pump head assembly, you need to have at least half of it below the well cap. Uh, and if your casing is only three inches off the ground and you have to have half of that pump head assembly below the well cap, you're going to be bending over to pump. So we have two, two lengths of pump head assemblies. One is two feet, one is four feet, so that we can allow for a correct installation where half of that pump head assembly is below the cap, but yet is sitting up high enough for you to pump. Uh, so having that, that height gives us the ability to determine which pump head assembly you require. Uh, so, so we also ask you who's going to install the pump. Uh, and this gives us uh, the, the ability to know, do you need us to help you find an installer? Are you going to try and do it yourself? Uh, or should we help you guys look for somebody nearby that, that can install a pump and has expertise to do so? We ask you if there's a, 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 an electrical pump currently in the well now. That's relevant for a couple of things we need to know based on potentially the size of your casing as well as to know what kind of cap to quote you because there are two different types of uh, ways in which the, the electric pump will have the water exit. In that question, we also ask you what type of pump configuration you have. So there are two main pump configurations. One is a submersible where it exits through the cap or the water line exits through the cap. Uh, the other is pitless adapter and that's where it exits through the side of the casing underground. Uh, those two styles actually require a different type of cap, uh, which is why we ask you that. Uh, now, if you do have a submersible pump that exits through the cap, there are different types, different sizes of pipe that can be used. There's one inch, inch and a quarter is the most common, uh, but even on a residential well, you can see as, as large as two inch pipe. Uh, measure that pipe measure the outside of it and we give you the outside diameter we give you uh, the the sizes of the pipe the pipe is typically measured based on the inner diameter so when you have say a one inch pipe the outer diameter is about 1.3 inches um, so it's 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 not as intuitive so make sure that you're measuring that to to not accidentally say it's inch and a half pipe when maybe it's inch and a quarter pipe Next, we ask you if you want to pump into pressure, or pump into your house. And what that means is, do you want to use the simple pump to pressurize your, your plumbing system, your water system? Uh, and what that does is tells us a couple of things. One, we need to have an extra check valve, valve and gauge kit uh, so that you can monitor that, that pressure that you're pumping as well as ensure there's no backflow into our pump. Uh, and the other thing is, is it adds quite a bit of uh, head pressure to pump into pressure. So 45 PSI is the same as you know, lifting 100 feet further down, uh, which our pumps have head limits, whether it be our, our smallest pumping cylinder, which goes the deepest, or up to our largest pumping cylinder, which 
uh, is really for a shallow well but, but can give you a lot of water. So we need to know what that total head limit is, so the depth of that static water level, that are you pumping in the pressure, uh, so that we can really make sure to configure and, and get you the right pumping cylinder. Very similar to knowing if you're going to pump into pressure, we, we kind of need to know where the water is going from the surface. Uh, in a lot of cases, we have people that want to pump water up to a tank that's up on a hill. Uh, and, and that's the same as potentially pumping into pressure, right? Or pumping from a deeper water level. Because if you've got 100 feet, say, for example, to get water to the surface, but then you need to pump it 100 feet up a hill, well, now you have a total lift of 200 feet. Uh, which again will tell us what pumping cylinder and what handle you need to order. And that vertical rise is vertical. So let's worry about just that elevation change that you're doing. If it's 400 feet horizontal and 20 feet vertical, all we need to know is the 20 feet vertical. Head pressure uh, is not actually impacted by horizontal runs. It's only by vertical runs. We do have a motor option. We do have uh, DC powered gear motors that can go onto our pumps and can be used instead of a handle. Uh, so we do ask you if you're interested in a motor. Uh, there's a couple reasons we ask you now is that they have different limits than our handles do. So uh, it will also play into what pumping cylinder uh, that we can offer you in, in order for a motor to work. Uh, there are a couple different options that we have for the motors. Uh, one is a full battery backup solar, everything you need minus the battery and the, the concrete to set the post. Uh, so it comes with a charge controller, it comes with uh, a solenoid system so that you could run a pressure switch or a float switch. Uh, it, comes with all of the, it comes with the panels, it comes with the mounting hardware, it comes with all the cabling, it comes with the drive system itself with the linkage. So everything you would need minus those batteries uh, and the uh, the fence post concrete to, to set the post. Uh, the other option is just a standalone motor, so uh, where you can actually provide the power system yourself. So you either provide the batteries or your own solar panels, your own way of charging those batteries. Uh, and that can be offered in two different ways. One is what we call weather resistant, so it's designed to be outside and deal with the elements of water, you know, rain, snow, um, sun, direct sun. Uh, the other one is, is intended to be inside of a pump house or to be covered because the motor is exposed so it, it's not protected from moisture and, and from the direct heat of the sun.